Rolling by Fiona Smith. Fade in. Exterior Liverpool port late evening. The setting sun glistens on the water of the port. Gulls circle a ferry as it prepares to set sail for Dublin. A queue of trucks is waiting to load on. One by one, they roll slowly up the boat ramp. High-vis vested staff direct drivers aboard. Close up of a truck mirror. The reflection of the driver, Terry, 24, a lean, dark-haired Liverpudlian adjusting his shades. Through his windscreen, a tabloid newspaper is folded on the dashboard, a swimsuited model pouting on the cover. He drums his fingers on the wheel as he waits. He angles his mirror to take in the driver of the truck behind. We see John, an Irishman in his late fifties, graying and a little paunchy, humming along loudly to the radio, singing a few words here and there, nodding his head to the beat. Terry smiles as he watches John, until he sees he's being beckoned forward by a ferry worker and drives on. John stops singing, gets in gear, follows him into the mouth of the ferry. Exterior, the deck of the departing ferry, night. The lights of the port twinkle in the distance and shimmer on the water. The ferry motors hum in the wash of the waves. Terry stands smoking on the deck, gazing back at the disappearing city. John approaches and stands silently nearby. Terry shifts slightly as he senses the presence. John clears his throat and steps forward. Pretty to look at, isn't it? Without turning, Terry responds first with a quick glance, then a hesitant laugh. Looks all right, yeah? The lights and all? Beautiful. They both stand with eyes fixed on the docks a moment. Then Terry flips his smoke overboard and walks past John and through the deck door into the ferry. Interior. Ferry dining room, night. John takes a tray and helps himself to the onboard buffet, ladling on meatballs and gravy and a hefty portion of chips. He picks up a bread roll and sticks it in his mouth before gathering cutlery and a glass of water and going across to the dining tables. Terry is sitting nearby with his plate piled high. He is watching John, and their eyes meet as the man approaches. Terry dips his gaze and begins tucking in. John carries on past him to a seat by the window and begins chatting chummily but inaudibly to one of the other drivers who is drinking a cup of tea and reading a newspaper. Interior, ferry bar night. John orders a pint at the bar. Terry is already seated nearby drinking the same. John sits down a couple of empty seats away. They both sit in silence for a moment. John addresses the barman, Tom, as he serves him his drink. Getting choppy now, eh, hey, Tom? The barman nods. Hope you don't get seasick. Hope I don't get seasick. He glances at Terry, who grins, then addresses the barman. I'll get a refund if this comes back up. Tom chuckles and shakes his head. You know what works wonders? A whiskey and ginger ale. When my daughter was pregnant, her stomach was rough of a morning. A drop of ginger ale would sort it. And whiskey is always the best medicine, eh? Ah, sure, go on. All the whiskey and the ginger ale chase for them. Let me asleep if it gets too rocky. Silence descends again as Tom serves the drink. An old fellow, Billy, sitting at the end of the bar, suddenly pipes up. A hammock? Terry raises an eyebrow. What's that, Bill? Give thee a hammock. An old sailor's trick. Helps him sleep through the stormy rolls of the ocean. Gotta roll with it. You do. You gotta roll with it. A hammock. How in Jesus' name do you hang it up, though? Or you could wedge yourself against the wall in your bunk with a bundle of blankets stuffed under the mattress so you don't roll about too much. Like a little nest. A nest? He exchanges an amused glance with John. A wee nest, eh? Cozy. A whiskey and ginger for me, too, Tom. Interior, fairy, night. Tom clears away a stack of glasses. John gets up to leave, staggers slightly as the crossing is getting rougher. He pats old man Billy on the back as he goes. Back to the hammock, eh, Billy? Billy waves and smiles hazily. John descends the stairway with care and enters the cabin corridor. Terry is approaching from the cabin door at the other end. John stops in front of his cabin, fumbles in his pockets for his key, and unlocks his door. He flashes Terry an awkward smile and a nod, then enters and shuts the door behind him. Interior, John's cabin night. John sits down heavily on his bunk, 
sighs and gazes into space. Interior Terry's cabin night. Terry sits on a similar bunk, near identical cabin, rolling a cigarette on the table. He stares out a porthole. Interior John's cabin night. Back to John sitting on his bed, rubbing his face discontentedly, visibly swaying. Interior fairy corridor night. Terry leaves his cabin and hovers around John's door, a little shaky with the boat's motion. He goes out through a deck door. We see him stagger on the dark deck through a window. Interior John's cabin night. John gets up and puts on his jacket, shuffling slightly with the listing of the boat. Exterior deck night. Terry stands smoking, gripping the deck rail hard. He flips the cigarette away and looks back at the door. Interior, John's cabin night. Still rocking, John switches off the cabin light and opens his cabin door. There stands Terry. The boat lurches and John falls into his arms. Terry reaches out to steady him, and they both trip back into his cabin onto the floor. After a shocked pause, they start to laugh. After a moment, they fall silent and start to kiss. Exterior sea, night. Cut to the waves lashing against the side of the boat. Interior, John's cabin, night. The pair roll around on the cabin floor, kissing. Exterior, night, sea. Waves lap the boat's sides and the silvery horizon looms into view. Interior, John's cabin, daybreak. The pair lie half naked together on the tiny bunk in a close embrace as grayish light begins to filter through the porthole. Opening his eyes, Terry looks at their hands entwined, John's wedding ring visible in the gloom. John pulls free rolls off the bed and begins awkwardly picking up his clothes. Terry gets up, dresses swiftly, and goes to leave. He hesitates for a moment by the door. Right, so, safe journey home. Uh, John, is it? George? John. Oh, the Ringo. Terry laughs and shakes his head. Whatever. See you around. He exits, shutting the door firmly behind him. Exterior, Dublin Port, morning. The boat docks with a glimmer of sunlight on the horizon. Trucks roll slowly down the gangway and off the ferry. Behind the wheel, a weary-looking Terry dons his shades. John, wedding ring in shot, as he turns his steering wheel, eyes Terry in his rear view as they drive off and along on the same road. There's an old snap of a woman, two boys, and a girl on the dash. Another more modern picture of a baby, a St. Christopher's medal dangles from the mirror. John puts on his hands-free headset and presses a button on his phone. Hi, darling. Are you up? I'm just on the way back now. Grand. How's Beth? Uh, lovely. Sausages and rashers? Yes, bleed and leave Marvin I am. Yeah, see you shortly. I just have to drop off. Love you, missus. Bye. The camera cuts between the two men behind the wheel and the road ahead as they drive. John's eyes flick nervously back and forth to the mirror, watching the truck behind him. He turns off the main route, leaving Terry's vehicle behind, and visibly relaxes. John switches on his radio when a pop song blasts into life. He starts to hum, but quiets abruptly as he sees Terry's truck hove into view again. He frowns at the mirror, and his hands sweat on the wheel as he swings another left, his eyes widen as Terry's truck turns into view yet again. Ah, here. John throws worried glances at the mirror for Terry's truck at every turn. Terry again closes in behind, and John, distracted by the presence in the rear view, doesn't see the crossing lights ahead turn red and a cyclist zip across in front of him. He hits the brakes hard and Terry's truck smacks into the back of his with a slight but definite crunch. Both men swear loudly. Terry rips off his chaise and hits the dash with his palm. John leaps out of his cab and runs back to where Terry is slowly getting down from his truck. Are you following me? What? Hey, I'm following me sat nav, mate. Look, it's just the way I'm going, all right? He laughs slightly and shakes his head. 
Jesus, don't flatter yourself. Now look what you made me do. They survey the damage to their respective vehicles. Ah, fuck. This is not my fault. Well, I guess we're going to have to exchange details after all. Hey, eh, Ringo? John looks from his truck and Terry, in panic, before giving an exasperated shrug and sigh, traffic horn sound. Two cops, one male, Garda Jim, and one female, Garda Jean, roll up on segways, the electronic scooter contraption recently issued to the Irish police force, a.k.a. the guards. They step off the segways and engage their kickstands. How are you lads? What's all this commotion then? Bit of a shot, lads, was it? John, gesturing to the trucks, runs through the collision as Terry rolls his eyes and flashes a smile at the female guard. I didn't see the lights change. The cyclist flew out ahead of me. I had to brake hard. You must have been a bit close, were you? I don't think so, no. It's one of those things. Let's get these trucks over to the side and out of the way. It doesn't look like much damage done any will it? They get in their trucks and pull in onto the curb as the guard I direct. John steps down and takes out his mobile phone and presses a button. The cops speak to Terry in the background, taking his name and details. Hi, love. Me again. Might be a wee bit late now. There's a problem with traffic. I'll explain when I'm home. No, it shouldn't be too long. Terry and the cops approach. John looks flustered. Aye, just leave him in the microwave for us. Sir. Mingo, the Daleks want your details. Garda Jim throws Terry some serious side eye while Jean grabs Terry by the arm and draws him aside. John hangs up. Just get your particulars there. Yeah, sorry, guard. My name is John Devlin of Dawson Supplies, Blanchard Town. Not Ringo, then? No. That's some sort of nickname? No, I think he's from Liverpool. So, he's Ringo? Yes, no, I don't know. Assuming he's not, in fact, a member of the Fab Four, you two know each other, I see. Ahead of them, Terry has replaced his shades and is chatting to the lady cop. She is laughing. It looks as though they're flirting a bit. No, he was on the boat last night from Liverpool. We met last night at the bar and on deck. It was just an accident. What was this accident? John looks increasingly unhappy and desperate. Garda Jean approaches. I assume your boss won't be best pleased with this. He might just blame your colleague, though. Colleague? You both work for Dawson Supplies, the same company. But Terry says, says you don't actually know each other. Dawson's? Eh, do we? Terry says he's on the UK side, delivering to your premises in Blanchardstown too. He says he's only there as a driver a few weeks. Your path's only crossing now. Isn't that gas, huh? Jim leans forward and murmurs in a confiding tone. A bit inexperienced in our roads, I expect. Anyway, look, listen. We'll leave this to our company and, and yourselves to sort out. The pair mount the segways, and Jim does a gratuitous double twirl as he departs, causing Jean to roll her eyes at him. The cops trundle off up the road. The two drivers stand and watch them go, both with a look of utter disbelief. Terry shrugs and takes out his tobacco and begins rolling a smoke. Did you talk to the company then? Our company, eh? I'll ring them now. I'll do it if you like. I'll handle this. John gets into his truck and dials. Terry lights his cigarette and smokes it on the curbside as traffic flashes past. After a second or two, John sticks his head out of the cab and calls him over. I'll drive us back since I've got the most presentable vehicle. They're sending someone to check on your truck just in case it's bannocked. You can come with me to the depot. Hey, what if it's yours is fucked? I told him it's grand. It's grand. Interior day, John's truck cab. John's driving, Terry sitting beside him, shades on. There is a moment of tense silence. The fucking state of those two busies on their little whizzy wheels. He starts to snigger. John cracks a smile. Exterminate, exterminate. Where the fuck did them two spring from? I mean, how in God's name do they catch any crooks? They can't even go up a high step. They both crack up laughing. Why didn't you tell me you worked for the Dawsons, too? It was right there on the bloody side of my van, not on the bloody side of yours. Well, if I didn't cop that myself until today, it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, ships passing and all that, or ships crashing into each other. John gives a tense bark of laugh and then exhales, shaking his head. 
Interior day, the boss's office. Boss Maggie is a small woman in her late forties, in trousers and a bright patterned shirt, glasses on a chain round her neck. She drops a pen and newspaper on her desk and stands up. You're after ruining my day and putting me off to Sudoku, you two. First things first. Are you all right? No whiplash? Maggie steps toward them as she speaks and puts her hands on either side of John's head and gently turns it from side to side, then does the same to Terry. Hmm. Because that bloody shit can strike much later, so if there's any pain or stiffness, let me know and I can badger you into going to a doctor. It's a Terry McMahon, isn't it? Maggie's demeanor suddenly changes from motherly to sharp as she fixes him with a stare. You drove into John here? Terry nods. You're barely three weeks with us. I'll be on to Dougie on your side. Let him know the story. See what he thinks. But the prank this early in won't see you through your probation, though, I'm afraid. Ah, Maggie. Now, it wasn't all down to him. As I said on the phone, my mind was somewhere else at the time. It's back, you see. Dee had just told me she wasn't well, so I was worried. Yet not well? Oh, will she be all right for her christening at the weekend? The little mite? Oh, oh, definitely. It's just a bug, Deidre says. She'll be grand. I'm just dying to get back to see her and Leanne and the boys now. But anyway, it wasn't Terry's fault. All right. Well, I'll point that out to Doug. But the final decision is up to him. You go get a bite to eat and wait for the mechanic to call. You have your mobile, yeah? Terry nods and exits swiftly. Well now, young Terry's made a good impression on you, has he? Uh, he seems like an okay lad. A bit of a mouth on him, but sound enough, I think, for a scouser. He knew well enough to keep his trap shut in front of me. Okay, John Love, you just get home to D and that little granddaughter of yours. You're off a few days now, aren't you? I'll see you Saturday for the christening anyway, God willing. Exterior day, outside work premises. John is heading toward the car park when Terry calls from behind and grabs him by the shoulder. All right, John. All right, Terry. Cheers to that in there with the boss lady. John shrugs, looks sheepish. Yeah, no, don't mess with Maggie, assuming you keep your job. I'll be fine. See you then. Keep your flaming eyes on the road in future, yeah? Fuck off. He walks away smiling. Fade to black. The end.